I'm going to show you how to make your Vero workflow sleep using a scriptable task. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavor. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. I'm about to show you how to make your orchestrator workflow sleep using a scriptable task. But before I do that, you might want to take a look in the upper right hand corner because up there you'll find a playlist for all the videos in the series. We're going to look at multiple ways of making your workflow sleep. So if you want to jump around between the different videos, go check out that playlist. In the meantime, the schema element we're going to be looking at this in this video is the scriptable task. The scriptable task, as I suspect you already know, allows us to write some JavaScript code to tell Orchestrator what we want to do. So we're going to write some JavaScript code to tell Orchestrator to put our workflow to sleep for a specified amount of time. And we're going to do that in the lab environment. Okie doke. Here in the lab environment, as you can see, I'm already logged into Orchestrator. And what we're going to do is go to Library Workflows. And under Library Workflows, we're going to create a new workflow by clicking the New Workflow button. First thing it wants us to do is to pick a name for this workflow. So why don't we call this Sleep in JavaScript? Because we want to make this workflow sleep by uh, doing it in a a scriptable task in which we're going to write some JavaScript. So we'll click the Create button. And then we have the usual fields that we would fill out for an orchestrator workflow, such as the tags and the all important description. But to save us a little time here, I'm going to cheat and not type a description. Instead, I'm going to jump straight to this tab here labeled the schema tab which you recognize as being the place where we define the schema for our for our workflow that we're writing. And uh, in our workflow, we would do, uh, we would add various schema elements. But if I wanted our, my workflow to pause at a certain point to, to sleep for a specified amount of time, what I would do is drag in, one way I can do this is to drag in a scriptable task and drop it into our schema. So there it is. Let me position it to make it look nice and pretty. And then over on the left side, excuse me, the right side of the screen, uh, ultimately I'm going to write the JavaScript code here in the scripting tab. In fact, why don't I do that right now? You can do this, what I'm about to do in either order. Let's go ahead and look at the, the code first. I'll jump to the scripting tab and I'll type amazingly fast here, amazingly fastly typed. Uh, as you can see, here's my JavaScript code. And ultimately what we're doing in the JavaScript code here to cause my workflow to sleep for a specified amount of time is to call this method called sleep. So the sleep method is part of the system object. And here within the parentheses, I need to specify in milliseconds how long I want the, uh, how long I want my workflow to go to sleep. Now, presumably you're already familiar with the fact that there are 1000 seconds in a millisecond. So in order to be able to do the math that you see me doing down here in the parentheses, I've set up a constant. A constant is simply a variable in JavaScript that whose value can't be changed. So I've set up a constant. It's kind of like a variable, but you can't change its value. A constant called milliseconds per second, set it to a thousand so that later on when I call system.sleep, I can just do some simple math. I can multiply whatever number of seconds I want to sleep times the number of milliseconds per second, which leaves us with one last thing to do. Uh, we've already defined what milliseconds per second is, but what's this seconds to sleep? Well, seconds to sleep could be a variable, uh, formerly known as an attribute. Uh, it could be a variable, it, which would allow me, the orchestrator developer, to hard code the the amount of time I want this workflow to sleep, or perhaps more interesting for our purposes here, sleep seconds to sleep could be an input to our workflow. So why don't we do it that way? Again, I could go to variables. Uh, that would allow me, the developer, to set the value of uh, the number of seconds to sleep. But I'm instead going to go to the inputs tab. 
I'm going to create a new input called, and it's going to be an input, it's going to be called seconds to sleep. That's the name of the, that we saw a few moments ago in the JavaScript code. And uh, I'll type a uh, description here. So how long do you want the workflow to sleep? And if this was um, the Realize Orchestrator 7, setting that description for my input would cause that description to show up as the label when the user runs my workflow. However, this is the Realize Orchestrator 8. Um, in addition to setting the description here, I would go over to the input form tab in order to um, set up the, the labels for all my inputs. But I'm going to leave it blank as it is. Uh, the other thing I need to do here is uh, instead of having the user specify how long we want the workflow to sleep as a string, which I then have to convert to a number, I'm instead going to get rid of that string type and instead change it to a number type variable. So we now have an input called seconds to sleep. It's a number and all we have to do now to actually create that input is click the create button. Now, as you likely already know, if you've uh, watched other videos on Orchestrator, there's one more thing we need to do. It's not enough to simply create that input, or for that matter, it's never enough just to create the input, the output, or the variable. We have to do some binding over in the schema tab. So my workflow has that new input called seconds to sleep, and I wanna pass that into this scriptable task here. So I'm going to select that scriptable task and uh, what the heck, why don't we uh, change the label here? So go to sleep. So um, that'll change this label over here. But in the meantime, I want to pass in the new input that we just defined as an input parameter. So I'll go to the input section. I'll click the plus button and I'll click select variable. And what I'll see here is a list of all my variables, all my inputs and an additional link here that I can click on if I want to create a new one of those. But I've already predefined seconds to sleep. Again, that was that number input we just created a moment ago. We'll select it. And if you were paying attention earlier, when you're looking at the code, uh, previously seconds to sleep was in a black font. Now it's green to let us know that that's actually a bound um, variable. So. Uh, I think we've got it here. Let's click the save button to make certain that we save our hard work. Then we'll click the validate button to make certain it's valid, which it is. We'll close that too. And then either here in the workflow editor, or if I want, I can click close. Uh, one way or another, I need to run this workflow. So why don't we do it from outside here? We'll click run. And as you'll recall, we specified one input, which is the number of seconds we want this workflow to sleep. Uh, why don't we give it a healthy amount of time, like 30 seconds, which again is 30 seconds is not what we're going to say to system.sleep. System.sleep needs milliseconds, so that would uh, be 30,000 milliseconds. But as we saw, the, the code actually defines uh, the, the math to calculate that for us. So we're going to click the Run button, and as you can see, the workflow, as we can see from the highlighting here, is paused right now because my workflow is sleeping. In fact, it's going to continue sleeping for another 30 seconds. But you don't want to hear me blab on for 30 seconds, so let's do some video editing magic here. Hang on. Three, two, one. And as you can see, our workflow is now done running. Now, if we want to go poke around and see what, what happened, we could go to the variables tab and notice that seconds to sleep is, in fact, set to the value of 30. Uh, we don't see the, the constant variable that I showed you in the JavaScript code because no variables defined in the scriptable task or constants for that matter are ever going to show up in, here in this variables tab. Any variable or constants I define in the in the scriptable task are, are local to that scriptable task. You never see them outside of there. But what if we go over to the logs tab? Uh, the logs tab, if we had been doing some logging, would show additional information here. But here in the logs tab, I can uh, see just from the timestamps for these automatically logged messages that my workflow started running at 2300 hours, uh, specifically 23, 26, and 56 seconds, 
and then exactly 30 seconds later, uh, my well, exactly 30 seconds, give or take a little fudge factor here, um, my workflow resumed running, which is exactly what I wanted. So now you have seen how to create a workflow. In fact, let's go back to that workflow. You've seen how to create a workflow that sleeps for a specified amount of time. And in this particular workflow, we did so by writing some JavaScript code in a scriptable task. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to make your Viero workflow sleep using the sleep schema element.